Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We worship God and we bow before him because heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. The heavens declared his glory and the former month show forth his handiworks. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. Pleasant good afternoon radio listeners in radio land and overseas wherever you are this afternoon under the song of our voice. Once again welcome to another edition of this radio broadcast Sowers of the Gospel and truly God has been good to many of us. He has waked us up this morning in our right mind. He has given us health. He has given us wealth. And he has given us strength. Because his mercies endure it forever. Amen and amen. I would like to petition the throne of God in prayer that God will have his way in this radio broadcast that we will decrease and he increase that we be crucified and he be glorified because he's the God of yesterday today and forever the Bible says from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised as I pray. Eternal Sovereign Father, the invisible, invincible, immortal, the great I am that I am, the God of beginnings, ending and beginning, the Alpha and the Omega. Father, I bow before you this afternoon as I bring this radio broadcast, Souls of the Gospel, into your hands. Father, take full control. For it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, thus says the Lord. And no man cometh to the Father except the Spirit draw him. For Christ once suffered for our sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And his Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And as many led by the Spirit, they are called the sons of God. Father, I bring all the radio listeners in Anguilla, in the Facebook viewers around the diaspora. Before you, Father God, knowing that you are the God who is in control, who is the author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith. Father, I pray that you touch the Facebook viewers, whatever they're going through, the circumstances and the situations, that they will come to know you who is eternal. Father, I pray for those in the hospital, psychiatric ward, senior citizen home, in prison this afternoon, Father God, by the power of Christ, that you touch them in every area of their lives, that they will be saved, transformed by your powers. Father, whatever they face with this afternoon, I pray blessings upon them and your healing power upon them, Father God, because healing is the children's bread. Father, I pray for this radio program, Souls of the Gospel, that you continue to bless us and bind us with cords that cannot be broken. Father, I give you thanks, I give you praise, I pray for cool FM, one tree, pine tree, that you continue to bless this station, Father God, in a very special way. And Father God, as I go into the program for the day, have your way, and let us decrease, and you increase. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Pleasant good afternoon to some constant radio listeners in Radio Land there in South Valley. Nita Petter, God blesses upon you. Pastor Cecil Richardson and his wife Jean, God bless upon you. Michael Fleming and his wife Jew, God's blessings upon you. In a very special way, Valencia Reed and Coyote Reed and Amaru Reed in the Valley, God's blessings upon you. 
Jerome wife, Jerome Gums and his wife Linda Gums there in South Valley. God's blessings upon you, Jim Lewis, and his family up there in Eastern. God's blessings upon you, Petronella Livingston there in North Valley. God's blessings upon you, and all you wonderful radio listeners who are tuning in today to numerous to mention. God continue to bless you all and sustain you all and restore you all and keep you all in a very special way. In Jesus' name, I pray, and not forgetting. The management and staff of this radio program, of this broadcast, this uh, media, the man himself, Bevan Brooks, God blesses upon you in Rondi, the engineer, God blesses upon you in Lee, Brother Lee, Lee One Production, God blesses upon you and we, the souls of the gospel, we just stop to say thank you very much for allowing all these programs that comes on every Sunday to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the four corners of the earth. God bless you in a very special way. Amen. Time is flying and the scripture reading for this afternoon is taken from the book of sin. Matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 1 to 11 which admonishes the temptation of Jesus. Amen. As I commence. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for the days and for the nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word for this afternoon, which is taken from the book of St. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 11, which edifies us the temptation of Jesus. Amen. And we know Jesus was tempted in every area, and he sinned not because he was the son of God. And we too we will be tempted in all areas, but we can overcome to the powers of Christ. And now we hear from Sister Tara, Tara Brooks, as she comes with what God lays on her heart. Amen and amen. Amen. Hold on, hold on. Amen and amen. Sister Tara, God blessings upon you as you do your testimony. Good afternoon, radio listeners and those on Facebook. Pleasant good afternoon to you guys. Today I'm going to read for you Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison in them that are bound to proclaim the unacceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God to comfort all that mourn. Okay, today I'm gonna sing for you. Wrap me, wrap me in your arms. Yeah, I'm not. Some Sundays I'm not here because I'm at work, but you know, whenever I get off, I always come in. Bless your hearts. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Into your arms, I'm driving never then to drown. 
desire It's my only heart's desire All I can do is fall on my knees and cry Cleanse me with fire and purify my heart Draw me closer, closer than before Closer than I've ever been Draw me close Closer than before Closer than I've ever been Into your arms I'm driving never again to dwell with you It's my only heart's desire It's my only heart's desire And Christ sends me with fire and purify my heart. Draw me closer, closer than before, closer than I've ever been. Draw me. Closer than before, closer than I've ever been. Draw me, draw me closer, and closer. Draw me closer to, closer to.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wrap me in your arms. Thank you, Sister Tara Brooks, for that wonderful song, Closer to Jesus. And we need to be closer to God in our relationship that God will have his way in our lives and direct our path. Now we hear from Eva Lynn as she testifies what God lays on her heart for this afternoon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm reading the word of God from 2 Kings chapter 4. Mm -hmm. a, certain, a certain woman of the tribes of the A certain woman in the tribes of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, Your ser yes, yes, your, your servant, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant fear the Lord. And the credit, credit, creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slave. Hallelujah. This passage of scripture was preached this morning at the Church of God of Prophecy this morning. Mm. Mm. And this afternoon, as I sit in the radio station can't remember the name of it i give god thanks we are here this afternoon for one purpose it is very scary the spirit of god move on me and in me this morning like never before mm -hmm. and we're here this afternoon to worship jehovah god in spirit and in truth and it's nothing but the blood. The topic was the good fight. Fight the good faith. The good fight, fight the good fight of faith. And I can say this afternoon without a shadow of a doubt, I thank God for Sister Mary. I called her last night because my two feet were swollen. And I didn't know what to do. When I said I didn't know what to do, anything that happened to me, I turned to Almighty God and asked him, to heal me and we know that <clears throat> it's a fearful thing to fall in the hand of the living God I fear God and I know that there is nothing too hard that my God can do he's able and without a shadow of a doubt I know that we are ready because he said in his word be ye, the, be ye therefore ready for in such an hour as we think not the sun cometh. I thank God for his healing because healing is his children's bread. Mm -hmm. And Father, this afternoon over this radio station, oh God, as we sit in heavenly places this afternoon, you have a plan, oh God. And your plan are sure. Your plan are yea and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I will sing just a short song from Revelation. I'm not a good singer, <laughs> but I love to sing. And these are the words from the scripture. I am Alpha and Omega. We worship you, my Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank 
God for what he has done and what he's about to do. Amen. Amen. Then. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Sister Evelyn, for that wonderful scripture reading and testimony because we know we overcome the enemy by our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Now we hear from Sister Mary Walters, I call her the vibrant one as she comes with what God lay on her heart. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise amen. All right, Sister Mary, go ahead what God lays on your heart for this afternoon. God bless you. I want to give God thanks, <laughs> praise, glory, and honor. Just to our loving us to be in the studio today, the final Sunday in May, I give him thanks, praise, glory, and honor. You know, God is always there. Sister Tara, I love that song, that God could wrap us in his arms. Praise God. In our difficult situation, he can wrap us in his arms. And this song, what you sing, the little Hallelujah. song, yeah, it just encourages us, and we're here to encourage each other but today i just want to lift up jesus Amen. wherever i am and whenever i can i lift up the name of jesus for the name of jesus lifted me and today is the 26th day of me month always almost finished and later in the week we we celebrating anguilla day we do that once a year but we celebrate jesus every day and i give god thanks and pray that we can celebrate him and so i just want to encourage you with a quick word, time swiftly passing from Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 and it read I'm not going to read it two verses, I'm just only going to read one I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live and this is so powerful God say I set before you this day so heaven and earth we is a witness he said before us life and death blessing and cursing and god is so awesome god tell us what to choose he said choose life that you and your seeds that you and your children may live and i'm so glad he could have tell us choose death but he's a merciful god he tell us choose life so radio listeners i want to encourage you whatever situation you're facing today and you feel like giving up you have no hope, no confidence, no assurance. Today you can choose life. Jesus Christ say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You have an opportunity today to choose Jesus, to accept him as your Lord. He is the one that died, so we have life and have it more abundantly. When even Adam eat the food, we think it is over, but it did not over. God had a plan and God make a way by sending Jesus to die, so we have life and have it more abundantly abundantly my encouragement to you whatever it is you can choose life today can he come that he might have life and have it more abundantly who would give us such encouraging words tell us choose life and jesus say he come that he might have life and have it more abundantly today if you hear his voice hard not your heart he's saying come whatever your situation your circumstances you can come to jesus because he's a fixer he just know how to fix it for you god bless you thank you lord thank you sister mary walters for those words of encouragement because we are our brother's keeper and we have to encourage each other in the word of god and pleasant good afternoon to sharon benjamin overseas our facebook viewer god blessings upon you and martha lawrence who tunes in god blessings upon you in a very special way and karen vipers god's blessing upon you in a very special way and all you wonderful facebook viewers we all love you so the gospel love you but remember that God loves you most of all. And I count it a great privilege and honor 
to present the speaker for this afternoon with the word of the living God in the person of Brother Lawrence, as I call him, the preacher boy, he responsible for the word today. Brother Lawrence, God blessings upon you as you go into your message for this afternoon. God bless you. Yes, Brother James, thank you so much and pleasant good afternoon to everyone on Facebook, on Radio Land. And pleasant good afternoon to Sister Evelyn and Sister Mary Walters mm -hmm. and Tara Brooks. That's our ministers we have with us today. And Brother James, as our moderator, always doing a fantastic job. And we thank God for that. And we want to say um, to our Facebook viewers, Martha Laura down in Dominica, we're so happy to have you. And our sister, beloved sister in Atlanta, Sharon Benjamin, we say thank God for having you. And we have Simone Wilson. It's so nice to have you and uh, on our sister Mears um, <laughs> is watching as well. Princess Mears Brooks is on Facebook as well, uh, watching, viewing for us. So we thank God for every sister and brother in the land of the living. We're going to speak about uh, on a topic today, and our topic is shaping the battle for but the battlefield for spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to shape, we're speaking about shaping the battlefield in spiritual warfare, which is a term that has been used by modern warfare. And we know the strong armies of the United States Army, and you have mm. the Russia, Russia Army, and you have all the powerful armies. Now, Apostle Paul wrote this, the main, main text I'm going to speak about is in Ephesians chapter 6, 11, and 18. But first, let me just describe what shaping the battlefield is all about. Now, shaping of the battlefield is, is, is to make the, the, plain, the, 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 the battlefield more favorable to you. So, in other words, in modern warfare, what they do? They, they destroy of the common posts and the common se common centers and the logistic hubs. You know, Sister Mary, the logistic hubs is the food and the water and the supply that is being taken to the infantry into the battlefield. So when you manage to fight against an, a strong opponent, my sister, now you have to destroy their logistics. You have to destroy their common posts. You have to destroy their organization in order for, for you to gain advantage on that battlefield. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use this analogy just like Apostle Paul uses because at the time Apostle was writing this scripture in, um, in Ephesians chapter 6, 11 and 18. But we're going to read at this time. Ephesians 6, chapter 11 to 18. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual as principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, uh, wickedness in high places. We therefore take on you unto you the whole armor of God that he may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Mm -hmm. Stand therefore having your lines girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shoulded with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit. And watch Jeron 2 with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Yes. Hallelujah. This word is so powerful yes. because Apostle Paul is addressing an audience in Ephesus. And the Ephesians, we call them, and he was trying to convey a message to the people, Sister Mary, because he was trying to encourage them to tell them that spiritual warfare is nothing soft. So now he was using an analogy because why the Roman soldiers attire because the Romans they had the most powerful army at the time. So Apostle Paul was using that analogy with the attire of the Roman soldiers with the helmet and the breastplate and, and the shoe and, and gutting out their loins. That's what Apostle used at the time. But Apostle, unknowing to Apostle that will reach in a time where you have a higher level because the Bible says that man knowledge will increase. Mm -hmm. So man reaching a different height where, where they have 
different tools for warfare and it become more intense and, and man become more wicked. But we were going to stick to what Apostle Paul was saying at the time because he used the, 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 the fatigue or, 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 or the clothes or the clothing of the Roman soldier, which of course at the time was their protective gear. So Apostle Paul asking us to be vigilant in the spirit because he using his wording as an analogy or a metaphor or we say it as a simile that simply means like or as. So it's a tool writer used to write poem or all writers use it as a tool to bring out a spiritual message. So in other words, we said that already. Apostle Paul using a literal thing, a physical thing of the Roman soldier to bring forth a spiritual message hallelujah because bringing a straightforward spiritual message is the mary people will not understand so you're using the trees and the things around us the practical things around us to give them a spiritual picture in their mind what is all about and that's what we're talking about today so apostle paul was the author of um ephesians and he he, he wrote to the the, the people in ephesus and conveying that message uh, about being resilient, be not afraid to recover or bounce back from difficulties and abilities to get back in shape quickly. So in other words, as a Christian, it doesn't matter the situation that you're confronted with in your physical body, in your mind, in your finances, in your marriage, all the situation that you confronted with Apostle Paul was encouraging them people in spite of Sister Mary. Mm -hmm. He, he put on the whole armor of God because yeah. that is the that is the only way you can fight the, the arms of wickedness because we are not fighting against red and flesh and blood but spiritual wickedness in high places mm -hmm. and Apostle Paul brings forth that message in an easy way so that every um, the kindergarten student will understand so Apostle Paul say because you know another thing that came into mind that to recover quickly because you you, you 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 put on that whole armor of God, it'll give you that stability and that strength. It's like an elastic. When you no matter how you stretch an elastic, it will come back to its former self. Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul is telling them people, it doesn't matter what you have been confronted with sickness and pain. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. Jesus. Be like the elastic, no matter how stretched you are. But anytime you let go, it will come back to its former self. So that's why Apostle Paul was encouraged his people in Corinth so he says stand therefore having your loins gutted about with truth and you know your line your loin sister Mary is considered to be under your ribcage above your pelvic line hallelujah so we know that was a term that we used to use in the old day in my country when they tell you tie your waist that means to say they are preparing you for hard work hallelujah so that means to say when you go out into hard labor into the garden or wherever it is i think all country that produce agricultural produce and work hard going to get firewood your mom or the dad will tell you tie your waist because today going to be a hard day for you so apostle paul was telling them that Good your loins, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. with the preparation of the gospel, mm -hmm. hallelujah, the, 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 the truth. So that what we're saying that when you understand the truth of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, it doesn't matter what circumstances that no. come your way sure. because you, 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 you have been built up. You, you tie up that waist. It, it, it's, it's another yes. term to say that, okay, because the Christian, the Christian fight is not easy. No. So that means you have prepared yourself in the word, in the gospel of truth of Jesus Christ. So when the hard time will come to mm. shake the foundation Jesus. because you know Jesus Christ, is the solid rock on yes, which you stand. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, you amen. cannot go wrong by serving Jesus. No. Hallelujah. So gird your loins. Prepare yourself in the spirit, in the spiritual to fight against the wild of the wickedness because they eventually come. Because if they take you on a way that means you're not prepared, that is where you're going to crumble under pressure. So Apostle Paul telling them, gird your loins with the preparation of truth. Just like they used to tell us in the old day, our grandmothers and our father, we're going to carry firewood, we're going to, to plow the land. So tie your waist hard today because today you're going to work hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you, just like Apostle Paul as Christian, gird your loins, hallelujah. Tie your waist hard because spiritual warfare is not easy, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, lower down, it said, 
Hallelujah. I don't want to go too fast, but I don't want to go ahead of, of myself and, and time is slipping away so Amen. quick. But I thank God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay to the truth of Jesus Christ. Because false teachers will come mm -hmm. with another gospel, yes, but yes. there will be no other gospel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And you know, there is some people always coming for new revelation, but there is no new revelation except the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you don't have to be moved by every wave of doctrine no. that is thrown at you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So I thank God for that. Glory be to his name. I thank God for everyone on Facebook listening today. I'm so happy to have you on facebook those of you that they um, joy laura i thank god as always take time to say hi to our people and nathan daru i know you're you're watching as well thank you nathan daru to hooked up with us today and philip dong in maho mayan mayan will uh, mayan williams marian williams i'm so happy to have you as well today and joy laura um each and every one of you i just want to make sure I acknowledge our Facebook viewers and each and every one of you um, who are there with us right now. And, and the second one, it speaks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness to protect. Okay, okay. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And Apostle Paul was telling them to put on the breastplate of righteousness because we know that the breastplate of righteousness, when the Roman soldiers went into war about the gyms, you know your hearts and your lungs area a vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. If a sword has to go through this area and, and go through your lung system area, you might not make it on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Your heart is a place where deception can creep in. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the spiritual realm. While I'm speaking about why Apostle Paul used the Roman soldiers with the Romans fatigue on the breastplate of righteousness to protect the, 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 the chest area where the heart is. Anyone, anytime somebody would, would, would go past you with, with that sword, with the Romans and them, the other fighters used to have, without medical intervention, you will die. Mm -hmm. And even before they rush you to the hospital, you will die because your heart is compromised with a big hole from a sword. So they had to cover that breastplate. But I'm speaking to you in the spiritual realm. Your heart is a represent a place that will store the spirit of God. And then you can, if you don't be careful that your heart is not guarded with righteousness, what happened? Deception will creep into your heart system, Mary. That's what Apostle Paul was conveying to them. And when deception is crept into your heart, it make you believe in another gospel. It will make you believe in another truth that is not there. Because there is no other truth no, except no. the truth of Jesus Christ Amen. that he died on the cross Amen. for. So that's why Apostle Paul say, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because he wants you to cover that heart from every form of deception. Because he knew that Apostle Paul, um, Paul spoke in, in one of his scriptures that say, Be aware of this man that will crept in the churches unaware. And they will take you by surprise because why? They want to infiltrate a venom, a venom into the church. And that is the reason why that we have the breaking away of the sin system, Mary. Because you, you know now that You've been raised up in a doctrine to know Christ, except um, Christ wants you to live a life that is moral. Um, you know, without adultery, without fornication, without reveling, without lying, and all this stuff the Bible sticks about. But there is some other preaching and teaching that will teach you, um, teach you that it's okay to live that kind of life. Because if God really loves you, he will not punish you, or he will not send you into a lake of fire. Because he loves you so much, and, and uh, um, hell simply means a place of torment. And we're going lower down. We're trying to address what Apostle Paul was preaching about. And we know the heart can house bitterness and unforgiveness and greed and, and murderous stuff and adultery and, and all kind of thing can be housed in the heart. So you have to safeguard your heart from this kind of thing. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And the Bible says that show your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So that means to say, show your, law, show your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Because when the Roman soldiers would go in the battlefield, Brother James, that shoe he's speaking about, that shoe was a heavy metal shoe system area with spike under it to give you pivot. Spike. And stability. 
So the Romans would have spiked under their feet. So even though they're fighting on mud and slippery area, they will stand from Sister Mary. Yeah. So they will not be vulnerable anytime you fall, Sister Mary. If you're fighting without them spiking that heavy metal shoe, the Romans and them would trip and they would be easily dead. Mm. Because the enemy will have an upper hand on you. So in the spiritual realm, that when you stand firm in the teaching of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and you put yourself in the preparation of the whole armor of God, it can cause you to stand well. That means you have to pivot yourself in the word of God. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm speaking about. Pivoting yourself on the truth. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to his name. And, and that's what it's saying. Oh, glory be to his name. So in other words that you have to. The gospel of peace. Hallelujah. You have to show your feet with the, the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To give you the stability. Because Jesus Christ is that solid rock on which we stand. Hallelujah. Yes, there is no other even ground that we can stand mm -hmm. except hallelujah. There is no other rock that we can stand on but is on the uh, on the on, on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh glory be to his name. And the scripture said for the dawn above all take the shield of faith wherewith you should be able to to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Hallelujah. Above all, take the shield of faith because the word of God declares that we, it is impossible to please God without faith. Hallelujah. So the faith, hallelujah. And, and, and we always, in, um, in Hebrews, tell us what is faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now in Hebrews 11. Now if it is a substance of things so far. Yeah, yes, yes, hallelujah. Bless his holy name. So that, that's what I'm saying in Hebrews. Hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for with the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. That is what the faith it speaks about. Take the shield of faith because you understand, we understand that shield, Sister Mary, that shield is an offensive um offensive um a defensive tool where they would have it and the shield is to quench all the fiery darts so that shield would be protecting your whole body mm -hmm. and then you have your sword that's all the roman shoulders in the fire hallelujah because that faith in that shield will protect them but our faith is in jesus christ and his word yes. so it doesn't matter what's around you you might be sick and asking god to heal your body but he has not healed your body yet it's not because he's not existing because he still wants you to believe whether i heal you or not i still exist hallelujah yes. whether you go hungry for a week god still exists he's yes. nothing taken by surprise nothing, nothing. so that's what faith is really is all about we don't have to tap in into a another man faith for our healing we don't have to tap in into another man faith for our deliverance because when we know the maker of the wind when we know the healer hallelujah. itself hallelujah. hallelujah we stand on the authority yes. of his word yes. because yes. his word already declared that he sent his word forth and he will come back to him void because it must accomplish what it's yes. for so when we have that faith in christ whenever you ask yeah, the Bible says, "Ask and yes. you shall you shall, um, uh, you shall receive, and seek and you yes. shall find, and, shall and knock and it shall be open." Mm -hmm. But sometimes, as Christian, you may knock and it, it, the, the door is not <laughs> open yet. Tell me, tell me. You 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 might be seeking and you're not finding yeah. anything yet. True, so true. You might be asking for healing and for financial blessing, mm -hmm. but nothing is coming your way. That is so true. So the, that is where this, you have to yes. stand firm in the Word of God Amen. to know that faith, Hallelujah, is that shield, Hallelujah, hallelujah. that hallelujah. evidence of thing not yes. seen and that substance of thing hoped for. But we can remember when the Scripture says. Those who wait on the Lord, He shall renew their strength and they shall mount with wing like eagle. Hallelujah. Because why? The eagle is defined to be the stronger bird with the, yes. the stronger yeah. wing. Yeah. And, and based on science, the higher the, the, the eagle sword, the higher it fly, is the more visible it pray going to be to it. Amen. So even, even the, the snake, which of course the python snake or whatever snake, the venomous snake, when the eagle grab it on the ground 
and the eagle bring it so high in the sky where the um the the the, the pressure or or what we see um the outer space pressure it's too much for the serpent for the snake to automatically die mm. because it's so so high mm -hmm. because it is on in unfamiliar territory so the snake when it reach up the the atmosphere it's technically that pressure will kill it so that eagle is so powerful glory be to his name hallelujah so as i say that shield is a defensive weapon used to defend against the wild of the enemy and the scripture said for the dawn take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. <clears throat> so we understand this what Apostle Paul is saying. The helmet of salvation and the word of God, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. They go hand in hand, sister. Yes, yes. And if I speak, if you allow me to speak a little about modern warfare. Hallelujah. What the enemy does in modern warfare is to destroy the head. And every time they try to take the president or the prime minister, mm -hmm. Or they try to take the city first Jesus, yeah. because the city or a town that is where your arsenal most of your valuable weapons does be situated hallelujah and if they if they destroy the headquarters that's why we spoke about at the beginning mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 common centers and the common posts i'm speaking about modern warfare right now and anytime they get to destroy that part the enemy would have sent his infantry and to walk through your country and evade everything that you have. And the same thing like the devil, Sister Mary. Our mind is situated in our head. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul was saying, cover your mind, your head. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> the, 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 the thing that holds your mind is your head. And we're speaking about a spiritual warfare, shaping the battlefield for spiritual warfare, because now the Bible is saying our mind is the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why Apostle Paul was using an analogy about real fighting from man to man, hand combat with swords and shield, but he was <clears throat> conveying a spiritual message with telling you that you need to cover your mind. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because your mind mind anytime the devil infiltrate your mind <coughs> you're going to struggle mm -hmm. and sometimes our mind cannot define that who we are in Christ Amen. even though your mind will tell you not not worthy mm -hmm. even though your mind will tell you sister Mary you, you're not beautiful but the scripture will tell you you're fearful and wonderful you made in yes, Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> when you understand that in the gospel of Jesus Christ, when your mind will tell you you're not valuable, you're not worthy, but God yes. cherishes us as kings and priests. Hallelujah. It is, isn't that wonderful, yes, Sister Mary, yes. to know that you're a king and you're a priest yes. in the kingdom of Jesus yes. Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. When the worldly people, let me tell you, the things of God can only be discerned spiritually. Yes. And that is the problem that we have now. We have a lot of book smart people. Hmm. And they go to university and they have doctorates and, and masters, Brother James. And they even doctors, medical doctors, if you hear them speak about the scripture, they think they can school every minister of God. They think they can school every pastor because they try to use uh, the education and background they try to use book smart in order to interpret scripture <clears throat> but i tell you before because people before would have more faith in christ because all these universities and all these colleges and the high school mm -hmm. wasn't in place so all people had to depend on is the faith in god hallelujah yeah, to yeah, survive yeah. <laughs> and they did very well but as man get more knowledgeable and more book smart so they use the education of the world to school in the bible that's why many people go astray because they use the calling dictionary and all other dictionary to give you the definition of certain words and they they, they try to twist the truth of jesus christ because you, the things of christ can only be discerned spiritually Amen. and that is why apostle paul was trying to tell these people this man will crap on our way there's educated men and what i find now even now the men that are called by God or the men we think that are called by God went to infiltrate every government system in their churches. 
and and they cannot operate outside of the government to deliver a message for God. They always have to exalt a, a king, a priest, a prime minister on the pulpit, and 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 that very man, that very minister, that very prime minister, the very president, they are dabbling into the occult. They are there into the Illuminatis, and sometimes they have them up and up because why? All ministers do seem to discern the things in the spirit because so some of them even though they are inclined theologically and they have the masters and the doctor theologically so what they do instead of preaching a message of salvation with the knowledge they think they have they start correcting every ministers worldwide mm. they start trying to correct every doctrine and they're starting to tell you this pastor this apostle say that but it's not that and these things are not relevant to our salvation sister mm. mary mm. yes the bible has certain things that is written and that is not relevant to our salvation yes it is good to study so samson wife mm -hmm. yes ha, it, it's the name of samson wife has nothing to do with my salvation yes i will study and know this person was samson wife this lady was abraham wife this person was you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i mean we study your bible but the things that more important matter that are relevant to our salvation people still they stray away of it mm -hmm. yes. so they want to come with the wisdom of the wise and speak who sarah was and what sarah used to worship before <clears throat> and do what sarah used to worship or abraham was a, uh, used to worship paganism and his father used to worship idols and abraham used to worship idols before he become christianity mm -hmm. Yes, we can study these things to our benefit. But whatever Abraham used to worship before Christ, that has nothing to do with me because that is not pertaining to my salvation. Amen. Yes, you could encourage someone, Sister yes, Mary. Yes, yes. So, you know, ministers taking a lot of time to try to correct other ministers and this kind of thing. Where are uh, the important matters of salvation has not been discussed all the time. Yes, so the helmet of salvation, where your, your mind is where the battlefield is that is the apostle paul saying now the word in modern warfare we we cover this is they cover the skies we from um, in, in like america have a lot of them patriot the, the missile defense system so when the fiery darts and and the missiles with the projectiles will come to rain over your land that missile that system will release an automatically Hallelujah bomb or something a missile a surface to yes. a missile to destroy the things that come to destroy you so what apostle paul was telling them with the helmet of salvation and with the word of the spirit which of course is the sword and if you realize th this article that paul wrote this sermon that he wrote uh, the only offensive weapon you could see is only the sword all of the rest was to, to defend you mm -hmm. but the sword of the spirit is the word of god hallelujah Amen. so when the enemies try to destroy your mind which of the battlefield the scriptures that you study will automatically coming out of you Jesus. and sometimes Amen. you don't really need to confess it but because you know the scripture you hallelujah. love and hallelujah. to know that my, my god, god says, says this and this will happen yes. Yes. i will strong on snakes and scorpions yes. and by no means it will harm me when the word of god says hallelujah yeah. you will drink deadly poison on our yeah. and that no means that it will destroy and kill you that is the faith we have in christ yeah. so when you study the word is the spirit the sword of god hallelujah yeah. with the salvation that you have the word will help you to obtain and maintain salvation and the word in you because the, the bible says when the enemy raised like a flood in the night that means to say when the people in america sleeping yeah. and the enemy send their projectile their missiles they have their patreon missile system to automatically start shooting them thing down pow, pow, one way and the other, shooting all them them bombs in the air without harming the people while they asleep hallelujah. hallelujah so even when you feel a bit fragile when the enemy is raised like a flood in the night that spirit of god will raise a standard the spirit of god is the word of god hallelujah will give you that authority and that autonomy to stand hallelujah to fight against the wild of the devil i'm persuaded today that christ is real and i know whenever i preach sometimes i cannot contain myself sometimes when I preach, I want to take my time and preach. And sometimes 
I, I don't want to talk too fast or, 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 or scream too much, but sometimes you're not getting carried away, but I can feel something Some, come over me. Yes. And when I finish preach on the radio, I'll feel dry. You can ask my family, I go right to sleep, Brother James, because I know there is something that is bubbling inside of me when I'm preaching uh, um, the book of the New Testament. The Bible say, hallelujah. Some have a form of godliness, but, yes. but they deny the power. The power the and power, the, power. The, the power. Yes, the power. Because you see, the, the, the Israelites, all they do, they go in the temple. And based on research and theology, you see all that giving and all that things, the people, the very same thing they used to do when they, they worship idols. They used to bring food for the idols. They, they used to bring gifts for them, same idol. And even when they become start serving God, they still develop that thing because they always think you have to bring food, you have to give things to, to a different deity. Mm. But I'm here to tell you, you, you cannot feed, hallelujah, with God, with physical things. Hallelujah. God is spirit and everyone that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Yes, yeah, spirit is your spirit is the spirit of God who dwell in your minds and your heart. Hallelujah. And I'm saying that to say, when you understand the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, kind, long suffering, peace, self control. And we know that the gift of God, <clears throat> this is what attracts the gift of God. Hallelujah. 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 Peace of God. Hallelujah. 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 Cover me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I thank God for his word today. <clears throat> and it blessed me because I, when I knew it was my turn to preach, I said, Lord, give me a word for myself Jesus. and the others. Thank you, Lord. And this, this word blessed me even more, I believe, than everybody else because I can feel it in my bones. I need to have certain things in my life. I need to put back on track. Hallelujah. Because I need to put my faith more into him. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. And amen. to see. Hallelujah. Karen, Pastor Karen, thanks for having you and um, Juliet. Let me just say that well, you know. <laughs> oh, praise God, hallelujah. Skibby Proctors, it's so nice having you. Um, Juliet Kayabu. I, I'm, I just should be an African name, Juliet Kayabu. It's so nice having you. I, forgive me if I don't pronounce your name properly. Um, Skibi Proctor, Pastor Karen. Um, it's so nice to have you and every of our viewers. And um, we thank God for Anne Philip, Sharon Benjamin, Nathan Daru, um, Marian Williams. It's so nice having you today, my sister, Simeon Wilson, Martha Laura. It's so good to have every one of you. Um, uh, I hope I don't forget any one of you, but if I do, I ask for forgiveness. But it's so nice uh, having you today, and I thank God for his word. Brother James, take it away. Praise God. We give God all thanks in all praises because in everything we are to give God thanks because God has been good to us and we give God thanks and praise for everything that has been done this afternoon that bring glory to his name and I want to thank Sister Tara for that wonderful song Closer, Evelyn for her testimony and Sister Mary the vibrant one for her testimony and the preach word by but allowance we talk about spiritual warfare and we know that the weapons of our warfare that they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds bringing every evil thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and for we know for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness in high places in the battle that we all are in this afternoon it's a spiritual war face a battle and this battle is not to be won by guns clubs sticks knives and baseball bats is the spirit that's why the bible says it's not by might it's not by power but it's by his spirit that says a lot and only in the spirit we can defeat the powers of darkness once again karen vipers pastor karen vipers thank you for tuning in martha lawrence and sharon benjamin and all you facebook viewers around the diaspora 
We thank you very much and we pray that God bless you, strengthen you as you go through this week. To have a blessed week and all the radio listeners in Radio Land who are tuning in to this radio broadcast. We pray that God continue to bless you all in every aspect of your lives. And as you go through the week through your job, remember, as I say, to put God first. Because only that is done for God will last. Amen. And God is the one who empowers us to get well. So we have to give him thanks and give him praise. Coming up next is Voice of Salvation with Pastor Evans Brooks and company. Then Waza, the truth shall be known. And then past, um, Brother Ashton Brooks, Kingdom Message, and goes further on. God bless you all. And as you go, go in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, and in the power of his might. Until next time, see you. God's pay life. God bless you all. Amen. As I said, up next, Voice of Salvation with Pastor Evans Brooks and company. God bless you. One songwriter says, The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice